like going over the edge of it. I was thinking colonial stew. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's talk about technology. Good, bro. <laughs> yeah. If you stop going. I'm a fat guy, that's how I breathe. Though <laughs> no, you were sighing. <laughs> you were trying to do some sort of focusing sigh. He's Ali. He's Stu. And we are the Tech Sentinels. Hi, we're the Tech Sentinels. We're two average Joes who spend our own money on technology and give you our opinions on it. Today, we're going to talk about the Nintendo Switch. Which yes. is the new Nintendo console that's coming out in March. Yep, we had the reactions to that. And my reaction to that, Sue's reaction to that, I don't know if they're going to be the same, we haven't really talked about it. So, the announcement video? Yeah. The um, announcement video that came out in October. For people that don't know, well, for people's head that's been in the sand, uh, it's the Nintendo NX that everyone was going crazy about, and they've now called it the Switch. If you haven't watched the trailer, I would recommend pausing this video now. No, not now, because I'm going to tell you. And then come back to this video, and then we carry on talking about it. So pause now. Now you've watched the video, right? <laughs> now you've watched the video. These are our thoughts. So what we're going to, like, go to first. Let's start with the, the rumoured specs. Based on NVIDIA Tegra CPU, which has been used in NVIDIA's... Um, Shield. That's it, Shield. That's Android based. So it's a kind of a mobile based CPU, GPU combo. Which, in the grand scheme of things, you could say is un underpowered. But, you know, with Nintendo, for me, they've always been software driven. Yeah, it's, the Nintendo Switch seems a little bit like their own version of gaming itself. Like, they, they can't compete with the two big boys. No. Like, let's face it, so they're trying to make innovative ways of trying to bring gaming to everyday households, as you can see from the trailer. Like, there's the basketball one where they yeah, put yeah. two together back to back and four people can play, which will go onto the peripherals later on. There's the pro esports, yeah. So, they were trying to make the Switch maybe into an esports uh, recognized machine, and not just that more sociable. Yeah, the, the people with the esports can get together in the same room, really talk about it. You know, you've got this. Uh, it's seven inch screen. Some room is to be running at seven twenty p. Just five inch screen that size. You can you know use it in your home, take it out, go around. It's bringing a social experience to gaming. Mm. Or that's what the advert or announcement video looks like to me. There's also the dude on the plane that goes around on the plane and yes, pulls out busy lifestyle. Yeah, busy lifestyle. And he's playing Skyrim and loads of different games yeah. just on the go. He's playing in the, on the plane in the taxi at home in the airport. Meet in the girl. airport, in a in a bench on a bench somewhere. Yeah, meet you know. some girl. So uh, that's pretty good. It's like yeah, play anywhere. And the last one is uh, that the lady that's all of her mates are on a neighbouring rooftop, and they go, oh, come over here, you know, come and have a drink, and then she takes her console with her, and then they're all like crowding around playing all these games, which seems a little bit unrealistic. But as you said earlier, before we started recording, it's sort of the extreme scale of it. Yeah, it showcases it's, the different ways in which you can play. Um, and the different ways in which you can play with other people. So yeah. the, the busy guys show the versatility between playing at home and then obviously taking it on the road. The esports you can get together and strategize like they did with, with you know with a sheet of paper. Uh, you can all play together and then you can go and play it in the arena. You had basketball players which actually they set two up and went head to head against each other on on basketball. So you assume two against two, and then you had the group where they used the separate sides of the controllers to play yeah. a four-player on one machine. So I'd say that's the examples of, you know... What was the game they were playing four-player? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure. I don't know. Because I can't remember that I saw We saw Zelda. We saw Skyrim. But it's been said that that's been superimposed on at the moment. But it, it should support it. Um, we saw Mario Kart. If I'm not mistaken, mm. it was in the car because you had the band. That's it, the band in the van, and they had like a holder oh, for the car. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, that's what they did, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, well, you, there was a new Mario game, which is obviously going to be normal. Yeah. You know, releasing a Nintendo console without a Mario game is just suicide. Let's face it. It did people... happen. Huh? It did happen. What was that? Wii U didn't get one on release, did it? It didn't get one on release, but yeah. what I mean is that there will be one. 
But the only what Mario games are there? Actually, well, no, we're going to digress on that yeah. one because I, this isn't about the Wii U. This is about the I was going to say NX. It's about the Switch. Um, so the first thing that I would like to go on to is the is purely aesthetic. It's purely the design. Yeah. In my opinion, it's very similar to a Wii U gamepad. So you've got the screen in the centre, except these bits are cut off. So you can pull these bits off, right? We will assume they're Bluetooth. Yeah, that's well, I'm not sure about or that. Wi-Fi wi 20.2.4 wi gig Wi-Fi, something like that. For, for me, it seems like he does too much in the trailer. The, guy, the busy guy, the one with the busy lifestyle, does too much in the trailer with the, in, with the console for it to warrant it actually being able to happen. Like, he puts it down into the little dock, which is fine, picks up a controller, and it seems seamless. Uh, and then he picks it up, plays it in the airport as normal, you know, with, as he would like the Wii, Wii U. Um, then puts it down when, it, when it's yeah, standing it stand, up. It has a rear stand on the back. Yeah, it has a rear stand. So he puts it down. I'm just going to use this front ways just to... Puts it down, and then unplugs the controllers. Yeah. You know, so then... They're separate, which is fine, and a, and a bracket, and puts it down. But then later on, you see them split up the controllers, and how you know for two player, and even possibly four player. And I just I can't see how all of those possibilities can then make a fluid game, a fluid experience. Well, I think when they when he slides the controller off, there's also a, a centerpiece that you can slide the controller in. Mm. So. This is a Wii U Pro controller, so the idea is that you have a centerpiece that you slide the two outer bits onto and it becomes the controller much like this. Mm. So, to play it without a television, or to play it with a television and have the two side pieces, if you don't have the centre bit with you, they are just there. So, that makes sense to me, and also if you slide them off, you then have buttons and analog sticks. You can have two players and the trigger, which is kind of an interesting setup. A bit like how there's certain Wii games that are played, like Mario, um, Wii, Super, Mario Super Mario World. That's it. Yeah. Now, another thing we were saying about the whole four-player aspect of it. That's, this is another thing that I don't get. Is if you think the controllers are, are very similar laid out like this, so you have, I don't think, is it an analog stick here? There's two, yeah, there's two analog sticks. But what, I think it's more like the 360. But how can you get four players on you that? You can't, you can only get two. And then you, get, you can get by, from what it looks like on the video, another two of those controllers. Oh, I thought you meant it's one on each side no, 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 of the no, no, controller. No. I was like, no, not from what I can see. No. So, that, so, okay, so two switches. Yeah. So that kind of brings a social experience of being paired uh, like a LAN party. Yeah. So... It's again bringing that's, people together to play. That's quite nice, but also another thing in it, it's it looks like it uses cartridges. Yes, like the Vita. Um, yeah. The, whether the room, the, the rumor is is true, yeah, it will use cartridge uh, base. But how, how it won't much, be compatible with any previous console or current console from Nintendo. How much storage do you reckon a cartridge can hold that size? Easy, two hundred fifty-six gig on a micro. You can get micro SDs, that's one hundred twenty-eight gig. Flash yeah. memory, NAND memory, as it's called. So yeah, and it's pretty cheap, pretty affordable. Even sixty-four gig, uh, a normal Blu-ray is fifty-nine gigabytes. And you think how cheap for sixty-four gigabytes? It all just seems a bit tall for me. Like, look at the Vita. Right, the Vita had was cartridge games. Uh, the Vita wasn't too bad, like in its specs, compared to the PlayStation Three. But it seems like that it can never run much. What can I say? Like quality games, it was always like a total difference in graphical quality, and I can't see it bringing. <coughs> but how long ago did the Vita come out? It quite a long time, but it's the point that I'm trying to make. Is um, okay, you've got the Switch, which is its own console, it's its own own unit. Yeah. Um, you put the the game in, and that, that is the console. But then you put it into the dock, and then is that streaming? From what I would see, the dock is a charger and an HDMI out to the television. That's all that the seems, that, I don't know. I I will. And I would I'd say like to have one in my hand to be able to understand this. With an Nvidia Tegra of the new generation that's coming out with uh, the new architecture, the MVN architecture, I would say you're probably looking at the power of an uh, Xbox 360. 
because you've got, without getting too technical, you've got new manufacturing processes now where you can make more powerful GPUs that use a lot less power. So for me, I'd say it's, it's and they're running, the screen on here is 720p. Now I'd assume it may be 1080p on the television, but then it's going to take a hit in quality. So I'd have 720p upscaled, because people play Nintendo are software orientated, experience orientated. So this doesn't have to be, in my opinion, a technical powerhouse. No, it's a, it has to have rich content. Now, the Super Nintendo um, wasn't exactly high powered as it could have been compared to the Mega no. Drive. The Mega Drive came out three years before. The GameCube was technically underpowered compared to the Xbox mm. and the PlayStation 2. Um, we'll skip the N64 because that was. That was in a time where you, you know it was, it was too late for one generation. And I'm sorry, the table's put me off. <laughs> too early for that. It's a bit squeaky today. Sorry about the table. It's it, it just constant squeaks. It's just yeah. It's an old girl needs oiling. Yeah, if you, you do all wood, you do all wood. Yeah, you, you give it a big, good old rub, don't you? Yeah, exactly. French polish. Yeah, yeah. We, we've taken the tablecloth, but yeah, carry on. Yeah, so in in terms Nintendo's consoles, it, it, even the Wii was massively. It's more quality. Oh, uh, yeah. It's more. Content, Game, content over technical quality. ability. So you look at the Wii, and they revolutionised the way that people play games. You had OAPs, um, old age pensioners, we call them in the UK, uh, playing games through the use of you know the Wii, Wii Mo, the Nunchuck, and for me, the Wii was an incredible console. Uh, Mario Galaxy, Mario Galaxy Two, are two of my favourite games ever. Mm. But the Wii itself could only get 480p. It couldn't do 720p like the Xbox 360 or the PS3. It was nowhere near as powerful, and yet it, it did really well. With the Wii U, I think they went the wrong way. You know, they bring out uh, this where they try and revolutionise again. Instead, it adds cost to the actual console itself. Um, and it was underused. I haven't owned a Wii U in a while now, but I am right in saying this, this screen itself was underused. Yeah, well, to be honest, the, the Wii U, all it was really used for is... If someone else wanted to use the TV, you could then go switch it to TV mode, which wasn't compatible with all the games. It's only compatible with some of them. So then you could play on the Wii U, on the gamepad, and then your partner can watch whatever, like some sort of TV program. But then the other uses for the screen was like inventories or like menus. Yeah, it's a second screen. But even PS4 has got that now with their app. Yeah, and people, a lot of people don't use it. I don't. Um... But this is a lot of hardware to use for one single use. We. Our episode about peripherals is probably going to be a good, a, a good reference to this. But that's what I'm saying about the, about the Switch. They're they're taking the best aspects of their previous consoles and they combine them into something that they think is going to be sociable and dynamic. What about this, how do we? We don't know that they they don't have the accelerometer and uh, uh, G meter and whatnot inside those two controllers. We don't know. If they do or they don't. Now, I hope playing, they do. If you're playing portable, in a portable, the, my assumption is that the, these two truck, can, these two controllers you can take off don't have any of that functionality. That that functionality will come. But if it does, well, come, in replaceable controllers. Yeah, but if it does come, then if you're out and about and you're playing it like this, you don't want that ability. You, you don't want to be waving it around. You have to put it on the stand. Um, and if you're on a plane, you're not going to be doing all this. So for me, but a big a big section of Nintendo's gaming was the whole motion sensitive, like for for the Wii. Yeah, for the Wii. But it's not what made the NES successful. It's not what made the new Super Nintendo successful, and the N sixty four in its own right was successful. It was driven by software. But then, if we think about it like this, what like if Nintendo released a console that didn't have any of these fancy bells and whistles, and it was just a console that just went under the TV? Yeah. Um, would, do you think that would be as successful as the Switch would be? Because it's not got those innovative ideas. As long as they had a lot of first party content. And by first party, it has to be by Nintendo. They have to push their franchises. I, for, for me, I've liked Nintendo a long time. I've, you know, Not as much as other people. And I do think the way that they try and bring like, innovative ways of gaming and for either casual or professional gamers, I think that's very commendable and very good. But now I think that's... That's what they're known for now. But they, they are doing it with a Switch, through diversity of where you can use it. Mm, That's the I'm new just, innovation. I'm not, I'm not doubting that it's not going to be in it. I'm just I'm worried that if it then becomes a, a portable gaming console, then it's just a, 
It's just a powerful Nintendo DS that you can link to your TV. That's all I'm worried about. That's all I want to say because the DS, mega popular, major popular. Yeah, the 3DS, then there's so many different variations. The new 3DS XL. And the, but they're still going to hold things. those. They're still going to run with them as well. But what I mean is they're not going to release any new ones because surely this is their handheld console. No, appara- no, apparently not. The 2DS and 3DS are still going strong and they're going to keep them going. But sure, hey, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. I'm, I because hope they ch- do. But, but for it's children, in- it's a different market. They're looking at different markets. I think this is... The 3DS, I'd say, is for the, for the child market, whereas this you're getting into the, the Switch is more early teens to adults. And that announcement showed that where you have the guy with a busy lifestyle that can't always sit down and play his games, but is a gamer at heart. So if he has to go to a business meeting and go on the plane, he can take his games with him. That was appealing to that sort of person. And you had the social aspects where, you know, I've talked about this before, and I've talked about it on, on video, we've both talked about it, how even though you've got a headset on with your consoles, it's not a social experience to play anymore, in the same way as all sitting around the television. Now you can bring this new console around your friend's house. You can have a gaming night, and you, you can have pizza, and you can have a movie, and you can have Nintendo Switch. It's clawing back couch co-op, which yeah. is an aspect that was that's been lost for two generations. With big now. advocates of it as well. Ca- couch co-op is honestly the most fun that you'll have gaming when you're sitting there, either beating each other up or you know going through dungeons together. So the last game, in my opinion, that really did that well. Of, of the latest generation I can think of, aside from your independent games, was the Call of Duty with a split screen. Black Ops, even playing that split screen with two people was really uh, good fun. I'm going to have to disagree. With really? You. My most fond couch co-op is Diablo 3. See, I only play it on PC. I have no idea. I've never played that. It's um, admittedly, the, uh, the PS... Uh, not the PS3, the um, PC version is quite a lot different if you've played it. I don't know how what it's like now, where it's... Do you still control it with the mouse? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's not like moving... It's the only it's way to thing. control Diablo. Yeah. Have you played the console version? No, no. I haven't I tried think it. you should. Yeah, yeah. Because everything is so much more... It's There's just so much more action in your face. Yeah, there's so much imagine. more panic. Yeah. Because you're then relying on Twitch gaming. Yeah. Where you're like trying to go on reactions instead of thinking, shit, where's my attack? Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll believe that, by the way. But that was fantastic, like fantastic experience. Well, that's what they're trying to bring back with the Switch. Exa- yeah, and I, I'm, I'm fully supporting that. I did notice in the trailer that there was no children in that trailer. No, wait, no exactly. That's, that's what I'm going so, back to. It looks you're looking for young adults up. Now it doesn't mean to say they won't be putting games on there meant for children. But what they may be doing is bringing out pushing the 3DS or a new version of 3DS to appeal to children. Because this is an extremely expensive console to then allow a child to go out with. Mm. I would assume, and it's only an assumption, it's going to be between 250 and £300. Pounds. That's pretty standard for a console of like this generation. But Nintendo aren't known in recent years of being overly aggressive with their pricing. I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to jump on board. Obviously, we're going to buy them as soon as, as, soon as they come out. I just I don't want them to sit there and be like, yes, yeah, an adult console, you know, you, you know, we want that, um, and then carry on the new 3DS. But then when, you know, when Nintendo should be making, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, which obviously p- people won't share, I understand that. But if I'm buying a console, I want to be able like to be able to sit down and just play it and just know that it's, you know, my gaming console because. For me personally, I don't have a busy lifestyle when I'm out. If I'm if I'm going somewhere, I don't have time. I don't travel where I'm. I'm not. Uh, what's the word like? Uh, not paying attention. Do you know what I mean? I can't just sit there and re- relax. You know, if I'm travelling, I'm travelling. And I think making a console that's mobile, you're sacrificing power for something that could potentially be a little bit better. But maybe they aren't appealing to you as a customer. Maybe they're appealing to other people that don't have the lifestyle where they can sit down and play and relax. Maybe they're appealing to people that have a busy lifestyle and want to get 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there and capitalise. Maybe they're appealing to people who get the tube or the train to their job or something. 
if I'm going to be brutally honest, this seems to me that whatever the nin Nintendo Switch can do, um, the only thing that it's got going for it, in my opinion, even though I'm going to buy it, I'm definitely going to buy it, the only thing that it's got is the first party titles. Because essentially, this is a mobile phone. Uh, but it did also show... It's just mobile gaming to me. Well, it's using a mobile, it's using NVIDIA's mobile chip. But, uh, however, let's say for example, let's talk about resolution, right? The screen, they think, is going to be running 720p on, on a small screen, which is fine. People that buy Nintendo aren't worried about teraflops, resolution. I'm not even worried about that. No. So, you could say that it's going to run at the same resolution on a telly, at 720p, which means... If it's if it's got the same sort of power as say an Xbox 360, you can play GTA 5 on it. Can't be too bad. You can still play the new GTA if you wanted to. Not like Nintendo would actually play yeah, yeah, on their no. console. But the point being is, from a technical point of view, to make it a hybrid, unless of course the docking unit has extra power in it, which I cannot see that. I cannot see that happening at all. I think all the power is within the handheld device. That's not even that bad of a a suggestion. Because if they did have extra power, then it would make you want to play this at home instead of it being just your mobile but, console. But they don't want you to just play at home. That's what they're marketing it for. And that's where I think it's going to shine. Mm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sold because it's got Nintendo's name in it. I'm just not sold. True, but the fact when I buy one... An individual... When I buy one and come round... Right? then we can play it together in a social atmosphere. It might change your mind. Next, if we, if we go to Eurogamer next year, when we go to Eurogamer next year, we take them on the train. Yeah. Then then it may show that it's a different usage. It's not just about the fact... I'm not talking about you buy this console and you have to justify, oh, I'm going to go walk to the park just so I can play it mobile. But the experience will come when there's a diversity in the way that you play. What about battery I, life, though? Like, well, they haven't said anything about the that. The battery but has got to be huge if it's pr doing that much processing. Well, you think about, yeah, okay, but you think about the size of it, which is around the same size as this. They could actually they could actually have a battery that dominates the whole rear of it. They, ne battery. they need a massive battery. Maybe 8,000 milliamp hours, which is twice the size of a, a standard smartphone battery. Maybe mm. three times the size, depending on what phone it is. So, but you're not going to be playing it for 10 hours at a time, portable necessarily. It might have a quick charge function like a lot of new phones have. I, yeah, it, it might well do. But what I mean is if you're on long journeys, or if you've got a, lo a string of long journeys, for instance, if you're travelling... Then you want, you want a good battery life. It doesn't have to be excellent if it's got the quick chargeability. If you can charge that from 0% to, say, 60 in an hour, then it makes sense. And it's not going to be very power hungry with the NVIDIA Tegra in there. It's designed for mobile devices. But then, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But like the motion controls will need to take battery. The, the controllers themselves that pull off will need to have battery as well. So they yeah, can't have sure. a central. They, they must have, for instance, a, a central power supply, a like power brick. Well, each controller will have its own battery. If it's and yeah, and I say, and then, then batteries in the side. <coughs> I just see there's so much going on. That the whole thing is gonna, the whole reason it's that size is gonna have to be a battery. But you know where there's a good point about this, right? You say, oh, you know, I, I don't want it to be like that because that's not the way I play. Mm. You never play games like you played on the Wii until the Wii came out, and you played what games completely differently. I'm not saying you got up and went anywhere. No, yeah, no, I, I, I take your point. You never played phone uh, games on your phone until the phone came out, and there's the ability to play that. But like, on, if you can, you really uh, like. I'll be honest with yourself. Can you really say that this is a new idea? Like to it's, me, it's, it's not a new idea in terms of I, I. I've thought of ideas like this. Lots of people have where you've got a hybrid, but you've always got to compromise on something, which has generally got to be computing power. Nintendo's never been about computing power. It's about I commend them for that. Content. Definitely commend them for that. Now it also said there was a lot of developers that were developing for this console. The advantage is with that that they have console optimization. They may make different games where it's third party titles just for this console that appeal to mobile markets that they you know the, the new Zelda's gonna come out, the new Mario's gonna come out, the new Mario Kart's gonna come out. 
there was a Skyrim on there, so we don't know what Bethesda's going to do. Capcom's involved. So there might be a whole range of games that they're going to make games that take advantage of the two-player with the two controllers. Maybe a Street Fighter 2. Or a Street Fighter game. That would be awesome, but I think Sony's got the rights to that now. Okay. Which is, but have they? Oh yeah, because it's PS... It's PlayStation and PC exclusive. On Street Fighter 5. Yeah, Street Fighter 5. Yeah, they might put, make Street Fighter Switch. Yeah, but... <laughs> All stories aside, right, <coughs> I had a conversation with someone at work today about Street Fighter, and I said that Nintendo have a, a Ryu Amiibo, yeah. because it's included in Super Smash Brothers. but when was the last time a Street Fighter game came out for Nintendo consoles? I can remember NES. And how many years was that? Well, did, did one come out for the N64? you need to correct this uh, if we're wrong, because I thought maybe Street Fighter EX came out on the N64, but I might be wrong. Oh, maybe, maybe, if it did, then. But since then, I don't, not to my knowledge, and I just thought that was a really strange character to put as an amiibo. Like, I know it was originally on the Super Nintendo and things like that, but, you know... But Capcom still, work, Capcom still works with Nintendo. Bayonetta. Was that not by Capcom? That was, that was by Capcom, mm -hmm. but... Capcom is not like exclusive to Nintendo. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. But to have a Ryu character, yeah, it's just, it's just, it seems a bit. Mental oh, uh, talking about amiibos, they are going to work natively with the Switch as well. Which, if you're an amiibo fan, that's great because obviously then all your amiibo collection doesn't become useless. But I think what they're going to do is they're going to make, they're going to have their first party titles and then third parties. In my prediction, they will make games that accommodate and cater. For a social game, play. it's about being mobile. It's about being able to go around your friends. It, yeah. So I, th I think it, it, it won't necessarily change the way you play, but you may appreciate a different style of gameplay. I think it. It's, I hope so. I th it, to me, this is going to be what mobile gaming should be. Your 3DS is really underpowered. And oh, it no, doesn't really work that. because it's driven by content. Look at the Zelda games, look at the Mario games, Mario Kart. They're really, really good on it. And the, the screen's really low resolution, but it's innovative. And, and they, this, this is going to be their make or break console. If this flops, I was going to say this that's is the end of Nintendo, in my opinion. As a hardware manufacturer, they will become like Sega has. To me, this is their third strike. Yeah. Like the first one, the Nintendo Wii was the first. To me, no, the, the, that, that sold over 106 million units. I know, but now they are, even though it's the it was the only successful motion-controlled console at the time, mm -hmm. that now you can pick up a Nintendo Wii for £10, right? And that's a little bit heartbreaking if you're a Nintendo nut, whereas Super Nintendos and Nint uh, NESs, you can get... Well, if you get any of them under 50 quid, you are lucky. Yeah, but I'd say there's demand and supply because there are hundreds of millions of Nintendo Wii consoles out there as well. The market was flooded. And there's a lot of people that bought the Nintendo Wii that weren't games players because they were intrigued and mm. seduced by the advertising. And I think they sold them on. Oh, also okay. the uh, Nintendo Switch will have, from what we could tell, a pro controller. It looks very much like this. Um, that will be available as well. Stick and buttons are reversed, though. So it had the it Xbox had more of 360 Xbox, yeah. layout. To and it. so does so does this. This has an Xbox 360 layout. Um, so depending on what size you get, depending on how you how you play it, if you if no, you if it's a 360 layout, then it'll be like that, wouldn't it? Yeah, but on one side, if you slip both the controllers out, one side you've got a controller in the middle, and the other side it's on the outside. If you're playing, oh yeah, I was, yeah, so I never really thought does, about that. It does change that. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I like the idea. For me, this style of gameplay, will it work? Do I go places enough? Not really, but it might be It might be a console where I just I tend to play the first party games. And then if I do go out, I mean, I, I like to take long weekends away with my girlfriend. It's something I can have in the hotel room. And me and her could play together with, with split controllers. Uh, I'd come around here and we could play multiplayer games. Together, there might be some good ones. I really hope so. I like, I don't want to hate on this because I'm not hating as such, but I've been heartbroken by Nintendo twice now, 
because the Nintendo Wii was it was a great idea. I just wasn't really that interested in it, unfortunately. Millions of people were, don't get me wrong. The Wii U was just, a, to me, a bit more powerful Nintendo Wii. You know, I'm glad they went away from the Wii word, though. Yeah. Because people thought this was an add-on when this first came out, yeah. when the Wii U came out. People were like, oh, was, you know, do I need an, an original they Wii? They should have called it the Wii 2. Yeah, the Wii 2 would have been fantastic. Yeah. But the Wii U is so vague in what it is. Yeah. You know, uh, do you know what the U actually stands for? No. Because I don't know whether it's a, you know, we, the brand of the console, or, or we as in us, and U is like another play of like you. Or is it some sort of word that no one understands? Like, I don't know. Because we, you doesn't make sense. I think it could be caught in a cultural difference between mm. us and Japan. Whereas the Nintendo Switch, the name is pretty descriptive of what it is. Yeah. You can switch the layouts of everything. You know, you want it like that, oh, you can just switch it, it up. You can play at home, you can play out, you can play split screen, you can play all together. So that, I, I like the idea up. of it. And I really like more powerful consoles technically. When, when it's with Nintendo, I don't care because their games don't require realism. They don't require uh, pushing textures and physics effects and I think what they're going to do their strategy in my opinion will be third party developers will play to its strength mm. I don't think they're going to try and get the latest Call of Duty on it I don't think they're going to try and complete, compete with the P PS4 um, and the Xbox they're going to make their own games for that style of gameplay that will play at home and play out when you're out and about it seems like the, the Switch's architecture is going to be completely different to these ne these what, Je this yeah, console. It, Tegra, so Tegra is completely different. These use x86, x64, P IBM PC clone architecture. This so this won't. This is different. So if you're optimizing a game for this will be this closer. Gen consoles, it's going to be really difficult to then optimize that same game for a completely different. I don't think it will be because uh, it's because it's Tegra. It will be more like mobile development. You'd be surprised how many third-party developers that make AAA titles also. Deliver for the mobile market. The Wii, the, the Nintendo Wii Switch, Wii Switch, you Switch. Uh, the Nintendo Switch is going to be the the equi the equivalent closely to a phone and to tablets, and it will be a PC or a, a console of this generation. Do you think that's what the market needs as well? Yeah, I think it's going to compete with the mobile market because it will make games that got a lot more substance. It will make AAA titles for this sort of format that will have a lot more substance. It's also catering to uh, people socialising again because you've got the diversity of being able to take it around someone's house. Hopefully it's going to bring people together like in people's front rooms. That's in what the, it, no, what I'm saying is that when, when you're at home, it's going to bring casual gamers or people that don't have a lot of time to play. It's, it's going to bring them back to the console as well because if, if, if you've got a large family again... And you can't play because someone wants to watch television. You just whip it out and you play it somewhere else. But it also means you can take it out of the house as well. You can play it on your lunch break. You can play it on the train. You can play it wherever you want. You can play it in the summer outside when you're enjoying the sun. Or you can put, stick it into your TV and play on a big screen. Uh, I think I think we're running out of time. Due to the video. Yes, the debate denoted that. At the last point is... What... Do you think this is going to do for online gaming? Because this is another thing, okay? That, well, yes. Right? Very true. Online gaming needs static internet connections. Now, I know that Japan, and I think I think it's just Japan, has got a complete countrywide free Wi-Fi. Yeah. So it always has an internet connection, which means that you can go out, you just connect to the internet and go. Whereas in, for instance, UK and, and the US and everything, they don't have... Solid internet connections everywhere they go. I'm pretty sure they're like us. You know, yeah. if you have internet at home, fantastic. And then when you go out, you don't, unless you can connect to things like cloud Wi-Fi's, which require logins. I, I think that's why that... they're making it on cartridge because it doesn't need DRM, and they're not worried about copy protection because they don't need to have it online all the time where they have this pinging service. Yeah, but for instance, Splatoon. We saw a, an advert for Splatoon in there. Yeah. 
uh, if they're going to try and make that in esports, you need a solid internet connection. So in Japan, fantastic. Over here, if you want to go out, does that mean that you lose all online capabilities? No, I think it's going to have Wi-Fi functionality. And yeah, you'll be able to connect to Wi-Fi, I you'll be able to connect to your hotspot on your phone. Yeah, no, definitely, 100%. But they might even bring is... out one with a SIM card. That's the, that was literally the next point I was going to. Like if, it, if they rely on you know, being online for you know, obviously things like Splatoon, not generally, then is that not going to cause a problem in our market without having a SIM card model? Because what happens if you can't hotspot off your phone? I don't think... I, uh, can iPhones do that now? Yes. I think they can, yeah, actually, they can. now. But, no, but, but some phones can't. I think you're so. looking at this, in my opinion, you're looking at this the wrong way. People that want to play eSports are going to go and find a broadband connection and play it there. Mm. They're not going to be playing... Oh, no, I'm so. just using Splatoon as an example. Yeah. But if there's other ones that are just like, oh, compete with your friends, you know, like high scores and stuff, or anything like that, you fancy something, getting something from the... St- from the store or even just general game updates. Then it will have Wi-Fi functionality, it may have a SIM card. Well that's the thing, is it going to be a data connection? Is there going to be a SIM card in it like the Vita did? Because the Vita flopped, it really flopped hard. Yeah. No, it's now uh, a non-essential peripheral for me, for the PS4. Yeah. That's all it is, just for remote play. And how often do we get time to use it? I'm just, I'm, I'm just dubious that this is going to turn into it could have another direct play, failed. ad hoc play, where if you're sociable, uh, if you're in a sociable environment <laughs> where everyone's around physically, then you'll be able to connect directly via Wi-Fi and set up a local network between them. It's called ad hoc that's, play. It's direct. That's a good point because that would the 3DS did it. A lot of you know PCs can actually do it, where you can actually directly link via Wi-Fi from one device to another. Because that, that was my concern, because if you're going to go out and you're going to like, oh yeah, let's play that basketball game. Yeah. Oh no, we don't have Wi-Fi. No, no, so no, no. I think it, I, my prediction is it'll be ad hoc, direct Wi-Fi connection. Through the didn't software. DS do that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm... And that's what I just don't want. I just don't want Nintendo to mess this up. No, well I think anything like Splatoon, they'll, you'll play that at home on a big screen oh, yeah, where yeah, you're yeah. playing competitive, I think. Look, but if you're playing locally, you'll, you won't need a hub. You'll be able to cr- connect ad hoc. Um, yeah, locally with, with your friends. But, you know, please, tell us what you think. Are you excited about the Nintendo Switch? Are you worried about what games are coming out? What about the support, the third-party support, the first-party support? What did you think about the announcement video? Leave your comments yeah. for us, please. Let us know if you're obviously in favour of the Switch or if you're like me, you're quite dubious about it. Uh, we definitely, definitely want to hear your, your opinions about it. Dubious stew. Yeah, stubious. Oh, That's what you could call. Hashtag. Hashtag stubious. <laughs> uh, yeah, just let us know. Um, obviously, do the usual of a like, comment, subscribe, the usual stuff that obviously helps our channel and helps us progress a little bit. Share. Yeah, that's the next part. If you're really nice and you really want to help us out and be lovely and touch our beards and stuff like that, then please share it about. I charge for that, by the way. I do not. <laughs> I don't charge for that. But please share it about. Um, I'm, I'm, why are you smiling like that? Please share it about. I knew he was going to say something like that. But yeah, thanks ever so much for watching. We have been the Tech Sentinels talking about the Switch. Goodbye. See you later.